This is Bobby Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Sensei. Let's go! Do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big barbecue central show. This is the show that talks about all things important of the world of barbecue and grilling. The show originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame City, Bomb City, USA, Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host. Greg Rempe, happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening's live fire fun and frivolity show. If you want to jump in this evening, but you don't know the contact info, let me help you out with that. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Follow us on all the social media channels at BBQ Central Show. And be sure to subscribe to the show podcast feed on your favorite podcast platform. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQ Central Show.com. And here's what's happening in case you get the newsletter. Coming up in about 13 minutes from now, it's the second Tuesday of a month, and that means in that first interview segment, the creator of AmazingRibs.com, Meathead, will join us. We will continue science with Meathead, myth-busting with Meathead, fun and frivolity with Meathead. One of the old wives' tales or old dude lies around the fire pit especially when I was coming up with the phrase, if you're looking, you're not cooking. Or if you're looking, you ain't cooking. However you like to butcher the English language, certainly up to you. We will dive headlong into that during Meathead's segment. And as time permits, I might have a follow-up question or two from him. Of course, anything you want to add into the instant chat, happy to do that as well. But we'll be talking about the myth, what's real, what's not, of the phrase, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Then we will move to the second interview segment of the first hour, 35 past. And he authors the Q sheet. He's also the creator of the website robertfmoss.com. That means we are visiting with Robert Moss. I believe it's been two months past since we've had our last visit. The first time I had a scheduling issue last month, Robert was very busy traveling. He is reinstalled back in South Carolina, so we'll catch up with him, talk a little Arkansas barbecue, talk a little price of brisket, and we'll talk about something everybody loves to talk about, top 50 lists. Yes! Very excited about that. And that'll bring a wrap to the first hour. Then we'll move to the second hour, and joining me at 14 past the second hour, one of the smartest guys and most connected guys I know in the business as it relates to restaurants and wholesale meats and commodities, Tim McKeska, McKeska Brands, will rejoin us once more. I think he was on in March the last time when we were talking about the cost of beef and pork and chicken and all that stuff. Well, we're going to be doing that again because... The most popular topic on the show, which really has just more been skirted around than anything else, has been the cost of brisket finished at restaurants, now approaching or passing $35 a pound. So we'll talk to Tim about why that is. We'll get some updates on the other barbecue meat pricing. And maybe there's something going on in Texas right this very moment that could be shaking the very foundations of the beef producers that we know, the big four, if you will. And we'll get some more insight from Tim on that. Then closing out the show, one of the best new websites out there. If you're not going to cookoutnews.com, you're missing out because Wes Wright is really putting together a great website. 
He's got all this knowledge and know-how and expertise on finding great information because of his day job and mergers and acquisitions for cranes. But then he also applies it to the live fire industry. So out of the bullpen tonight, Wes Wright. Bookoutnews.com. Plenty to talk about with him since his last visit. So that's how the show is setting up for you this evening. You can follow me socially, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, at BBQ Central Show. We say good evening to those of you watching the show tonight through one of our streaming platforms. You can go to Facebook and Twitch slash BBQ Central Show. Also, you can take in the show via the YouTubes slash RD Rempe, where there is also a robust chat going on as well, which 50-50 may or may not have anything to do with the show that you're actually watching. Also, we'll take a second here to say hello to the folks using our audio streaming platform, Clubhouse, as well. If you would rather hear us, and not watch us, and why would you? Clubhouse is the way to do that. So let's start here this evening. Memphis and May update. Last week, I read to you the statement from MRPP, or the Memphis River Parks Partnership, and I was waiting and waiting for some kind of reply back from Memphis and May. So I do have something right here. In fact, I'm going to read to you the entire exchange that took place between me and a fellow named last week from MIM, Randy Blevins. By the way, I sent a few follow-up emails during the course of last week, which went unanswered. He was out of town. He said he was going to be out of town, not returning until Thursday, but nothing shot back to me Thursday or Friday, so I followed up with emails over the weekend. And here are the results. Me writing, hey, Randy. Following up on Memphis and May items from last weekend, are you still interested in having a conversation to convey your side of the issue? I'm around all weekend. This was September 10th. Returning an email to me two days later, yesterday. Hi, Greg. Thank you for following up. We don't have any updates today, but expect to have actual news very soon. The World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest is an institution in Memphis and known around the world. I'm happy to keep you posted. That's a weird answer to me, so I followed up. Hi, Randy, did you see the note that the association sent me in regards to the deposit? Looking for your specific comment on that. That seems to be the item of the biggest concern for many teams and vendors, and it also seems the most convoluted part of this issue as well. Love always, Greg. And then Randy chimed back at me. Greg, yes, saw your email. We do not have any updates or comments today, but expect to be able to share news very soon. I will keep you posted. The World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest is important for Memphis culturally and financially is a vital part of the barbecue community and is a key component of Memphis in May. Uh, yeah, no shit. Oh, Memphis in May is important? I barely even ever know about it. Of course. I don't even understand what those replies are, Randy. And why do you make specific mention at the end of both emails to tell me, me, how important Memphis in May is? I, I get it. Hence the emails from the only barbecue show that probably emailed to ask you what the hell is going on. And are you circling the wagons of information? MRPP followed right up, laid out the whole situation, said what they're going to do, and now I'm asking Memphis and May what you're going to do, and I get Memphis and May is really important to everybody involved. And no answers as of yet, but you hope to share news soon. What are we game planning here? Is this the year in 2023 where you're going to be offering a refundable deposit instead of this $7,800 non-refundable deposit that keeps getting bantied around in all of the news articles and other podcasts that are talking about this. So, Randy, little disappointed in the response currently, but I'll be waiting with bated breath for the updated news and comments as it relates to Memphis and May, which, by the way, folks, I don't know if you knew this. A Barbecue Central Show exclusive news update. This just in, Memphis and May, really important and popular barbecue content. For those that you didn't know. Some listener feedback from the show last week. Gene in Florida 
Hey, Greg, first things first, great photos on social media of you and your family at a recent wedding. Well, thank you. Second, I tried sous vide chicken breasts at 145 degrees right from the freezer for a little over two hours. The meat was tender and juicy, but my seasonings didn't really permeate the entire chicken breast. I put them on all the chicken, or I'm sorry, I put them on the grill for maybe a minute or two aside to give them some color. I coated them with Suckle Buster's finishing glaze. My biggest mistake was not pounding the chicken breast down to uniform thickness. They were pretty thick. And one of them must have weighed over a half a pound. Bottom line, my wife declared sous vide chicken verboten. Said it tasted too much like boiled chicken. Well, we don't want that, Gene. She says we need to reserve sous vide for shrimp, scallops, and beef. Gene, happy wife, happy life. That's the only instructions that I have going further. Meathead's in the green room. Before we get to him, I will talk to you about Bub and Mothers. Many people look at Labor Day as the end of all things summer. Yet, some of the nicest barbecue weather still to come. Indian summer brings a lot of warm weekends to gather, grill, and watch football. Bub and Mothers can bring the flavor you and your guests deserve. Not only is it 100% natural, it has less salt than many of the other rubs you'll find on the shelves. Less salt means you can add more flavor by adding more rub and not worrying about over-salting your meats or side dishes. More spice, less salt also means these rubs go a lot further, last longer, and are a greater value. Want some new ideas? Fine. Head on over to bubbinmothers.com. That's B-U-B, the letter N, Mothers, M-U-T-H-A-S. And click on the What's Cooking link. There you'll find recipes, ideas for the rubs, including making your own barbecue sauce, wings that bite back, their soon-to-be-famous redneck aioli, and their barbecue margarita, just to name a few. Right now, till they run out, everyone who orders a four-pack of rubs, just $24.95, can get one of our special t-shirts absolutely free. Just enter the code, the letter B, the numeral four, go. B, the number four, go in the promo box at checkout and tell them which shirt and which size you want. Remember, every purchase created adds a donation to veterans charities. As a veteran-owned company, proud of their service and continued support of all who wear the uniform, Bub and Mother's, Down East Dinner Dust made with real maple syrup crystals and fresh roasted ground espresso. And our Honey and Heat, adding honey crystals and chipotle. Both flavors create that only your taste buds can appreciate. Bubbinmothers.com, that's B-U-B, the letter N, M-U-T-H-A-S, Bubbinmothers.com. And if you're not so ingenious like me, the Down East Dinner Dust and the Honey and Heat actually go very well together. I put them on pork. Winner. Winner, winner, pork for dinner. We'll be back with Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. Stick around. Be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com. Dot com for more information or to purchase. You can also see what other products they have that might add a little smokiness to whatever it is you're cooking on your pellet cooker. That's cookingpellets.com. My first guest tonight created the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website on the face of the earth. He is a best-selling author, a barbecue hall of famer, but more importantly than any of that nonsense, a barbecue central show guest Hall of Famer as well. We race to the hotline. And welcome back the first Tuesday, or the second Tuesday of the month, opening guest, Meathead. Hey, Meathead. Hello, Greg, and hello, Centralites. And Now, you get know, that Greg, microphone right up to your face. Let's go. Every month, it's with you. You know what? It may look like it's far Wait. away, but this Now, is- hold on a second. Hit that microphone. 
Nope. Uh, not again. Not again. Again. Believe it or not. Again. This is what happens. I think we should institute. How's that? No, it's the same. You have to uh, uh, disconnect and reconnect in order to fix. Assuming you have your settings right, we're going to have to go to sound check with you. Oh, for Christ's sake. Well, can we just muddle along? No, I'm not going to sacrifice sound quality. I don't care who it is. Fix it. All right, what do you want me to do? I got Close. this fancy microphone. Nobody else complains about it. Close the web browser and then come back in. Very easy. Very easy. I got this fancy microphone. Nobody complains about it. Think I give a fuck about anybody else? If everybody jumped off the bridge, do you think I would jump off a bridge? Give me a break. I'm my own man. Okay. Let's, let's hear it. Can you hear me now? Tap it. <laughs> That's not it. I don't know. What the, what the hell is the problem? How do we do this? How's that? No, I mean, it's, it's the same. What was it last time? We knew what it was last time. Uh, you know, you sent out a whole regimen for technique. <laughs> what do you want to do? I'm ready to go. I mean, are you? I, I am ready to go. I You can obviously hear me. It may not be great, but um, we can work this out some other time. We'll, we'll work Let's it out talk. off air. And if it happens again, you're off the show forever and ever. Amen. Okay. And uh, so, barbecue. Uh, tonight's topic is something that has been talked about. Now, I say ages because the show has been around 14 years and it's 14th year of live broadcasting, two years as a podcast before that. So, 16 years just for me, and many, many years before that, as you know. And one of the things that I heard most frequently as I was getting ready to get into this whole barbecue game. And really, when I got into uh, the virtualweberbullet.com where I met all my great barbecue friends, there was this phrase that kept circling around, and then I started seeing it on videos, and it was this. If you're looking, you're not cooking. So I was scared. I rarely took the dome off my Weber Smoky Mountain because it's going to take an hour and a half to get back up the temperature or was going to add another... 35 or 40 minutes to cook time and boy it really made a gal like me pretty nervous uh just starting out in this barbecue game and then meathead showed up and started debunking a whole bunch of stuff or testing myths so what can you tell me about if you're looking you're not cooking and what was the first time you heard about it well that is the topic we want to discuss but I'm going to just address one of your letters that came up first, and then we'll get on to that. Gene was complaining about his sous vide chicken. Gene, his, I got his, news his wife was complaining about it. Well, well I guess he, he was too. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Seasonings will not penetrate meat in a sous vide bag. Now, I've written a whole ebook on this subject, which you can get for free if you join the Pitmaster Club, or you can buy it for $3.99 on Amazon or Apple, but I've written in detail about this. Meat is mostly water, and most chemicals, most compounds, most seasonings, except salt, cannot penetrate meat, even in a sous vide bag. So you put your meat in the sous vide bag with salt, and that's about all you deal with. And when it comes out, then you season it. Now you've got a concentration of seasoning on the surface. It's not diluted in the bag by all the purge that comes out of the meat. Then you throw it on the grill. And not just for a minute, Gene. Give a good sear to it, and you'll end up with much better chicken. You still may not like it as well as grilled chicken, but you'll be much better off. Go read my articles on sous vide Q or sous vide barbecue. You're doing it wrong. Okay. Now to the topic we, we uh, promised to discuss, and that is when you're looking, you ain't cooking. The, I learned this too. I mean, everybody told me this when I first started getting into barbecue. If you open the lid, 
you're going to slow down the cooking process drastically. And it could be 5, 10, 15 minutes every time you open the lid. And so I started thinking about this, and I went to Professor Blonder, the food scientist who, who works with us, and we talked about this at length. And the, the key here is, is that meat is like a, a, a battery, if you want to think of it like that, or a capacitor. Hot air inside your grill or your smoker heats up the outside of the meat. And that outside of the meat holds that energy. Heat is energy, just like a battery. It's charging. And it moves slowly towards the center of the meat. And that's when the center of the meat gets to the right temperature, it's done. But if you lift the lid, you're going to let hot air out but you're not cooling the surface or the interior of the meat significantly. It's 70 to 75% water, and it just doesn't cool off. And um, uh, Professor Blonder ran some tests, um, and we did tests on a gas grill, um, a charcoal grill, and a pellet smoker, and we got a data that supports exactly what we thought, and that is, Lifting the lid, especially just for a minute to spritz it, to baste it, to check the temperature, has little to no effect on the cooking time. Now, if you leave it open for a while, it can have some small effect. But what happens in general is that the metal in the lid, the metal in the body of the grill or the smoker, the metal on the grates, the um, um, energy stored up in the surface of the meat, just don't notice the fact that you've lifted the lid. Hot air will come out, but as soon as you close that lid, it reheats pretty darn quickly. Now, I sent you some charts. Do you got them handy? Can you show those? Uh... Now, I sent you charts, hmm. and if you can't produce them, you're off the show forever. You can't throw me out of my own show, Mina. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Good try. But, Double standard. Yeah. Hold on. I but see, but I have them. Well, all right. We don't need them. I can explain them. Gas grill. When you lift that lid, it continues burning. So you're going to lose some hot air. But, you know, a lot of hot air is trapped under the lid. If you just open it for a minute and close the lid, it rebounds almost instantly. Um, if you leave it open for four or five minutes, it takes longer. Um, yeah, there we go. I don't know if oh, one of us can, can get it right. Okay, okay. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> we'll get the audio right. I just found a document you sent me that uh, told, gave me a few tricks to test the audio. See, this, you know, you're not using Zoom or one of the other. Uh, 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 we're not having excuses. Go on. Where I can test the audio. I can't. Test yeah, you the can audio test it with me every goddamn month, Baithead. I cannot test while I'm in the green room and see if my audio is working. We could have tested it last night. We could have tested it on Sunday. We could have tested it on Saturday. You're the only one that's got a problem with it, by the way. Only one. We could go right to uh, Robert F. Moss. He's never had a problem with it. Okay. All right. Um, so if you, if anybody is out there can see the screen, because I know a lot of people don't watch these, but they hear them. You can see uh, for a one minute peak inside of a gas grill, boom, the temperature drops rapidly, but it comes right back up for a five minute peak. It stays down for four or five minutes. It comes up and it takes a little longer to get back up the peak, but it really isn't affected significantly on a gas grill. Now, on a pellet smoker, you got that chart handy? There we go. Now, pellet smokers are different. They have a built-in thermostat. So they know they have a probe in the atmosphere, in the grill. They can tell, whoa, air is leaking out. We got to crank it up. So you can open it up, and it drops rapidly, but it comes back. And not only does it come back, it overcompensates. Mm. It goes up past the target temp and then settles back down at the target temp. Um, and uh, Blonder did an interesting test where he checked the meat temperature both at the surface and the interior, and it barely notices on a pellet because it has a thermostat, just like your indoor oven. 
Now on a gas grill, things are a little different. Got that chart handy? On a gas grill, I mean a charcoal grill, I'm sorry. On a charcoal grill, back to, sorry, <laughs> charcoal grill. Now you're dealing with a fuel source that depletes itself. You start out with a hot charcoal, um, base of charcoal, and as it continues to cook, the charcoal starts to burn down. So you get a diminishing of energy. So you, when you peak and then you close, it bounces back, but not all the way because some of the um, uh, charcoal is um, burning out and you're losing some of the energy. Although we discovered it's not on this chart, but I did another test um, separate from these where the charcoals were really fresh and lifting the lid pumped oxygen to the charcoals and not only did they bounce back, but they bounced mm. back hot. So the point is, and we did this also on a big heavy duty metal device, you know, like a, um, uh, a jambo and stuff where the metal is thicker and it holds heat. The bottom line is, is a quick peek to spritz, to baste, to check the temperature, um, to check the color, to flip the meat, is just not going to significantly impact your cooking time because the energy that cooks the center of the meat is already stored in the meat, not in the air. And as soon as you close the lid, the air comes back up the temperature fairly quickly, so it's hardly any impact. Um, but uh, if you leave it open for a little while, five minutes or so, there's a slight impact on cook time, but it's not a major one. Now, if you're talking about a 12 hour brisket or something, you might, if, you, if you're lifting it for five minutes, every half hour, an hour, you might cut back on your cutting, cooking time somewhat, but it's not a big deal. So if you've got a spritz, if you've got a baste, if you've got to check the temperature, you got to look at the surface, you got to poke it, you got to smell it, you got to show it to your neighbor, go right ahead. My biggest concern after I realized what was going on here was if you had it open, and this is more specific to a charcoal cooker, if you have that dome off of it, or for whatever reason, you go into the access door like the Weber Smoky Mountains have or some of the bullet style cookers have that access door on the side where you can replenish fuel or water or whatever the hell you're going to do. If you have that off for five minutes, my concern isn't I'm going to be adding 20 minutes to the cook or I'm letting all the heat out. When I got keen to knowing how to barbecue, my thought was there's just air rushing into that cooker and feeding those flames. So A, I'm immediately worried about if I do that five or six times. I don't know why I would do that, but if I did that five or six times, how much am I cutting down on my overall cook time capabilities? Because that oxygen is just making that fire spike unnecessarily. And then also uh, in conjunction with the spike, as I leave it open for five minutes and then I recap it, is that thing now going to get up to 375 degrees or 400 degrees if I was really looking to run it at 225? But when I took off the top, or that side, or heaven forbid both, you've created a nice vacuum of uh, oxygen to get up there and spike those coals up. Well, one of the things we discussed last month was um, the fact that two sources of important um, fuel, and uh, I, the, the, the people will technically argue that oxygen isn't fuel, but you have um, gas and oxygen, or charcoal and oxygen, or wood pellets and oxygen, or wood logs and embers and oxygen, but the oxygen factor is crucial. So when you open, and, and there's a lot of oxygen moving through there. Um, so, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, if you go to one of these modern offset smokers that are pretty darn tight, and you hold your hand above the chimney, there's, you can feel it. It's like a jet engine. It's blowing because it's pulling a lot of oxygen through there. It needs oxygen. Oxygen is its lifeblood. So opening up and giving it a little ex oxygen, as I in, in, intimated at, at the end of my little spiel there, sometimes actually won't um, cool it off. It may heat it up 
because you're giving it more oxygen. And a lot of people, when they cook it with charcoal, if it, things were running hot, they stifle it by closing vents down. Mm -hmm. So now you're starving the fuel of oxygen and it's, <laughs> okay, 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 I'll do 225. I want to do 300, but I'll do 225. And then you open the lid and it goes, whoa, <laughs> oxygen, and away it goes. So um, it can have the opposite effect. How you like Any the sound effect? Anything else? Uh, that, that was very good. Uh, anything else on if you're looking, you're not cooking before I ask you my uh, lead out question? Uh, shoot. We're coming up to the end of 2022, believe it or not. 2022 rapidly coming to a close, as I always say, yeah, every no, January. No, no. And here we are mid-September. For the la, past la, few la, years, la, la. you have made the attempt at putting together the first consumer-facing, consumer-focused trade show slash event called the Meetup. COVID had other ideas for the first few tries, although you valiantly tried to muscle through that. Is this something that you are thinking about resurrecting, or has that ship sailed for good? It sailed for the foreseeable future. You know, um, Like five I, years? Not, I, I don't know, Greg. I'm not the smartest businessman, but I've learned a few things in many years of business, and that is do what you're good at. And running a... A, a, a festival, an event, a conference is not something I'm good at, not something I'm experienced at, not something I was prepared for. Hmm. And uh, uh, Clint Cantwell, uh, the GM of our website and my right-hand man, and you know Clint well, he's a brilliant barbecue guy, but he's also doing a great job of uh, running uh, the business. Um, he and I put hours and hours and hours into this. It was originally scheduled for June 2020, and you know what that meant. Then we rescheduled it for a year later. You know what that meant. Then we rescheduled it for eight months later, and boom, uh, the in December when everybody's final payment was due, um, we had this new Omicron variant to go mm. through the roof. And we just spent a fortune in time and money trying to get now we know covid was a one-off event but you know what i think i'm going to be focusing on um building a great website building it better making our pitmaster club the best place to hang out on the website and giving our members more benefits uh, we have a really interesting feature coming up that i think we're going to implement for the pitmaster club i can't talk about it yet um, but, uh, uh, you know, and I'm writing a book. Uh, so I think I'm going to stick to my knitting for the near foreseeable future. <laughs> Plus the fact that the hotel we were originally scheduled at the Peabody in Memphis doesn't want anything to do with us anymore. <laughs> because of the cancellations? Oh God, three cancellations. I mean, they just oh, said, dear. you know, that, that I don't blame them. I mean, they're really nice people. And we, and I, and the woman who runs conferences that she and I get along great, but the, the the boss people just said, you know, if he comes back to you and says he wants to reschedule, forget it. Really, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. <laughs> so and it's the best place in Memphis. And if I'm going to run an event, I'm not going to run it at a uh, a motel, no tell. Hmm. Um, so uh, you know, the, now if we were going to do it someplace else, like Austin or Kansas City. We got to go through the whole process of finding the right venue and yada, yada, yada. So we're going to stick to our knitting for the near future. If somebody else wants to run one, well, I mean, I'm a big fan of Kel Phelps, whom you know. Um, he recently acquired the National Barbecue Association. I've been urging them for years to do more for the consumer. Um, and he says he wants to do that. And he invited me to participate in a um, a consumer facing activity in February, which is uh, uh, two weeks before the deadline on my next book. So I had to turn him down. But I think that maybe that's the right way to go. Mm. Let him do that and I'll participate. And anybody who wants to join in, come on down. I really do think there needs to be an annual event for consumers. And I really do think that Kel's going to make the the, the the trade side of the the National Barbecue Association better than ever. And it's always been good. 
Um, so uh, that's my hope for the future. Meathead was telling us all about what is myth and what is truth with if you're looking, you're not cooking. So if you missed it, go back and get the podcast starting tomorrow morning. You can find it on the website or wherever podcasts are available, or you can just jockey on over to AmazingRibs.com and find out all about it there amongst other myths. And you can see Meathead right here on the second Tuesday of every month. Meathead, always appreciate the time, and we will see you in October. And I will study your technical data on how to set up. We'll the, get together uh, off air. We'll get it straightened out we'll going do it forward. Off air. No we'll worries. Fix it. It'll never happen again. All right. It better not. There he is, Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. And if you've never visited there because you're just tuning into the show for the very first time, I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Plethora of information right there. And buy his book, join the Pitmasters Club, all that fun stuff. Why not? While you're there, experience it all. Robert Moss is next. Green Mountain Grills is still a thing for now. So why not race out to one of their dealers because they're only sold through dealers. GreenMountainGrills.com. Find a dealer near you. Go to that location. Study them all. Feel them all. Touch them all. And then pick out the one that best fits your needs. For instance, maybe you're somebody that doesn't need a lot of technological gobbledygook. A choice line, if they have it, is going to be right up your alley. Now, if you're somebody that likes to have Wi-Fi, somebody that wants to use an app in order to control the temperature of the cooker to set custom cook recipes and cook cycles, then you're going to want to get the Prime line couple different sizes to choose from there. Now, regardless of prime or choice, all of those lines do accommodate the pizza oven insert, which I highly recommend. It's very fun. It makes the cooker very versatile. And not only for pizza, although that's fun, you can do steaks. You can get a nice finishing sear if you're going to sous vide your chicken like Gene was. You want to put a nice sear on to get that Green Mountain Grill rocking and rolling. Punch it up to 500 degrees. Let it get all heated up. Toss that chicken in a cast iron skillet, and then away you go. Or slide those grill grates into the pizza dome and see what happens. It's amazing. You'll love it. You'll find all different kinds of uses for it. Again, sold through dealers only, GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. And we'll be back with Robert Moss right after this. Stick around. Be right back. Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. Hey, we thank Meathead for joining us last segment in this portion of the show being brought to you by Fireboard. Monitor up to six different temperatures simultaneously. Connect to Wi-Fi for cloud-based monitoring. Or connect via Bluetooth. If you have Alexa or the Google Assistant in your home, you're in luck. Fireboard fully integrated with both. Find out more by visiting fireboard.com or call 816 945 2232. That's Fireboard 2, Fireboard 2 Drive, and the Fireboard Pro. My next guest, the contributing barbecue editor for Southern Living Magazine, authors the Q Sheet, or does he? <laughs> and is also a restaurant critic. Let's go ahead and race to the hotline. And welcome back, friend of the show, Robert Moss. Hey, Robert. Hey, Greg. How's it going? Well, look here. Robert doesn't have any problem getting nice and tight on the mic. Good for you. Well, I spent the least, half, last half hour plugging and unplugging. So yeah, was, well, at least 50% of my guests uh, know that. I, again, I mean, as I told him, meat, I don't know if you are intimate with meatheads, uh, quirks, let's call them. Uh, he doesn't like when he's being told that he's wrong. In fact, he has a tendency to dig those heels in a little deeper than the yes. average human. So... You got to know where to play it with him, but uh, he's the only one that uh, has issues. But nevertheless, uh, that was last segment, not this this segment. Can I lead with this? Where is the aforementioned Q sheet? <laughs> it's been missing from well, my inbox. Yeah, it went on vacation uh, hmm. for the summer. Good time. I think it was in Martha's Vineyard for a while and played golf in Myrtle Beach and uh, things of that nature. And then my intention has been to bring it back, but... Uh, it hasn't quite gotten back from vacation yet because uh, I've been busy. It's been a, a really busy summer, and uh, I sort of had a draft of the Q sheet sitting in my – and each week I'd try to go update it, and then new news would happen. And I finally said, okay, I'm just going to put it on hold for the summer. 
because I was traveling like crazy and we can talk about a little bit about why um, and just didn't have time to do it. So I'm looking forward to getting back to it this, this fall as soon as I can come up for air a little bit. One of the most hotly debated topics, one of the things we always love to see, especially in the live fire industry, is the word lists. We yes. love when lists are put out. Of course, <laughs> one of the most infamous or famous lists is the Texas Monthly top uh, 50 or whatever it is. Top and 50. that always yep. gets talked about. It's released every three years, four years, or whatever it is. Seems a little ambiguous. Not to be outdone. No, no. Southern Living top 50 barbecue list is on the way. So, yep. When's it going to be released so we can start telling it's everybody how everybody wrong or right is? That's right. It's coming out this month, later later this month. I don't know right. the exact date. It will be published online, but but before the end of September, I believe. Now, when was the last one done? The last one we did was in 2019. There was a time, unlike Texas Monthly, you know, we, we actually can do lists more than every three years. So we were doing it you know, every year for a, a while, uh, up until some things happened in 2020 and all of a sudden mm. you know traveling and visiting barbecue joints was not really uh a good idea we took a look at doing it last year um i ended up doing the best i think like the top 10 new barbecue joints instead uh decided to have enough time and and travel wasn't it was still not fully back to, to normal uh last year even though barbecue joints were back up and running pretty well uh so we decided finally that this year we'll bring it back out and we'll see if it becomes it re returns to annual status, but it probably will because there's so much changing so fast in the, in the South. And obviously Texas monthly covers Texas. We cover the entire South, which includes Texas. So there we have a lot of ground to cover. Not to ask a stupid question, but where does the South start and stop? Yeah. Well, this is actually a, um, a, a, a rather hot topic, uh, when with lots of people, but with, with Southern living, anytime the list comes out, people will say, why is there a bunch of Kansas City restaurants in the list? Well, it's because it's in Kansas City, Missouri, which in Southern Living's definition of South, uh, the definition of South includes Missouri, uh, and it also includes Maryland and Baltimore. Why? You can have some arguments over whether those are Southern states or not. I like to think because there are a lot of subscribers who live in Missouri and Baltimore, <laughs> and you don't want to cut them out. <laughs> but uh, you know, certainly that that's in their definition. Uh, it, so it includes Kentucky. It runs along Virginia. Uh, West Virginia Ohio? is included, and then ends up not not Ohio. Uh, not, we border not both of those definitely. states. What's the big deal? <laughs> I know, really. Right, we might as well just keep going. Yeah, but uh, no, the South is uh, sort of ends uh, with, with Missouri uh, and Maryland uh, hmm. on the on the far east. So, what's the process of putting the list together? Yeah, so everyone does the list differently. Um, th this list, and actually Southern Living, this gets a lot of confusion. Southern Living actually has two lists of best barbecue joints. There's All the right. South's Best, which is published in the spring. I think it's usually the April issue of the magazine. And that is a reader's poll. So that's sort of the reader's list. And we do a, we do a big poll. I help, uh, you know, curate the, uh, the, 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 the entries that are going to be on the reader's poll, but we have a lot for every state. And so we'll do the best in every state and then do the best in the South. And uh, I write up the blurbs for those, for whoever the readers pick. So that's the reader's picks. That's who, who they like. And then this list is more the editor's picks. So th these are all my picks and uh, picked sol solely by me and it's based solely on you know, my own uh, unique and you know, all my, uh, my prejudices and, 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 and likes. But unlike a lot of lists, and you'll see there are top, 10, top 20, top 50 lists. A lot of people are doing the best barbecue in every state list. Uh, a lot of outfits like Lawn Starter is one of them that does some kind of uh, ser web service that will connect you to uh, local landscaping companies. So for some reason, they've been doing a, you know, a, a barbecue list. So lots of people do those, but most of them, they never actually leave their, their chair. It's all done, done from the, uh, for, uh, you know, done from the internet. Uh, everything on the list I've been to, uh, there's only one on this year's list that I've only been to one time. Uh, and there's sort of a unique reason why, because it's hard to get to. But all the other 50 I've been to multiple times uh, over, over the years. And and um, each time we do the list, I go back and, and try to revisit as many as I can on the list, as well as visit all the, the new candidates, contenders. I'm always keeping lists of people who might make it on it. Um, and so having had three years off, there's quite a lot of change this year uh, between the, the 2019 list. 
are restaurants getting in touch with you saying, hey, we're opening or, hey, we've been open since the last time you've done this. Please come and visit us. How are you curating a, a way to make your way through eating all the barbecue restaurants? I mean, it's a it's a mix. I, the, some restaurants probably don't even know who I am and, and it, it suddenly even living even has a list until maybe they show up on it. Um, but many others have PR people and they reach out and they blast me with emails and say, come visit. We'll, we'll set you up. And I'm like, no, thank you. I appreciate it. But, uh, you know, don't, I'll just come unannounced and, and, and eat. Um, you know, I'm more just keep track of, of, you know, and actually taking a pause in the cue sheet is, uh, has been, is sort of the cue sheet was a lot of the ways I would keep up with it. Cause doing the research for that, I'd see what's opening. I'd see what people are writing about. I see what's getting attention. Um, and so, so that was one way to do it. Another thing that we've been doing with Southern Living since I started as a barbecue editor is I'll go do, we, we were doing these state by state features. So we started off like doing North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee. Um, we just, we haven't quite gotten all the states in the South yet, but I just knocked off Arkansas uh, this summer. Hmm. Uh, so I did a, we're doing a whole Arkansas print feature that will come out, I think in the January issue, which really involved me going to Arkansas and, 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 and driving around. Uh, and eating as, as many places as I can find. And I just do a lot of research. You know, I, I, I look at you know what other people have written about. I, you know, I look at you know all those other top ten you know barbecue joints in Arkansas places. A lot of which are you know not very useful. And then mostly just you know Google and and, and find things. And I also watch social media. Anytime I see somewhere that looks interesting, I make a note. I actually have a little database. I keep everything in, so I keep a, a long running list of places to visit. So let's stick with Arkansas for a second. Is yeah. there an Arkansas style of barbecue? Because I don't necessarily associate barbecue specifically with states like Arkansas or Louisiana or some of those dirty South type places. Yeah, yeah, there certainly is. I mean, I I didn't really, you know, until the, this the trip this summer, I didn't really have a strong sense of what Arkansas barbecue is like. I'd I'd parachuted in a few times. I'd visit Little Rock, eaten a couple places there. Um, I'd, I'd eaten at Jones uh, Barbecue. I sort of been in Memphis and, and, and sort of headed out from Memphis and, into Arkansas a couple times. But it's nothing compared to like just spending three or four days driving around to really get a feel for the style. Um, there definitely is. It's a little bit regionalized. Um, I, I consider Arkansas it's just on the other side of the river from Memphis. So it's sort of an extension of the Memphis and, and the West Tennessee style in a lot of ways. The sauce is very similar. Um, you know, it's... It, Arkansas also borders Texas down on the uh, the corner where Texarkana is. So there is a fair amount of beef in in, Ar in, in Arkansas barbecue, but it's absolutely nothing like uh, what you would get in Texas. You know, I sort of think of the classic Arkansas style barbecue, at least the older style, as being either pork or beef. Mm. Uh, the beef is typically chopped, and it has it's served in this very you know, sort of thick brown, sweet, sweet tangy sauce, a lot like what you would get in uh, in Memphis. Uh, slaw, uh, beans are, are the common sides. One of the things you see a lot of Arkansas joints, though, is they call it dry slaw or, or um, even maybe sometimes just slaw, but it's coleslaw that has either no dressing at all or very, very minimal dressing. It's almost mm -hmm. like just shredded cabbage uh, that they, they'll serve on a sandwich. Sounds terrible, but it's actually pretty good. If you have a nice pork sandwich with a lot of sauce on it, you put a little just shredded cabbage on it, it adds a nice little crunch, and, and it's quite good. So I think of that as being uh, Arkansas-style barbecue. A lot of ribs as well. So so ribs are, are very big, usually with a lot of sweet, gooey, you know, tangy sauce on it. Is it safe to say your favorite of Arkansas is going to make it on this list, so don't ask what your favorite place in Arkansas was? Uh, that is correct. There will be mm. one, I think one, Arkansas barbecue joint on the list. Oh, curious thing about Arkansas is it's sort of like it's old uh, joints mostly. I mean, it's, it, a lot of these, the, the places are going, this is going to is, you know, some were found in the 30s, 40s or 50s. So some are that old. Others have been around since the 80s, 90s. You know, so they're very old. It seems almost like trapped in time somewhat. There's very little craft barbecue in arkansas i did um there is a, a great craft barbecue place called wright's barbecue which the original is in fayetteville i think jordan wright runs it he, i think he has three and it's about to open a fourth one now so he's starting to build a little northwest arkansas empire and there's a pretty good barbecue place a craft barbecue place called count porkula in downtown little rock it's in one of these little food truck rodeo kind of places um where you can you know buy beer and sit outside and, and eat but there's not a whole lot of that. So it, it's very much um, old school throwback type type of barbecue. 
Got a couple questions left, and we got a couple minutes left, so let's dive right in. First, I want to give you some time to talk about the Holy Smokes Barbecue Festival, as I see you're being uh, adorned there on the shirt. Um, here, yeah. <laughs> when's that happening, and what can we preview at the moment? Yeah, well, it's coming up November 19th uh, in, here in Charleston, technically in North Charleston, uh, South Carolina. So we, you know, this will be the second uh, outing of it. We did it last November and it was a huge success. Um, it is a, it's a, a nonprofit event. We're uh, raising money for Hogs for the Cause, which is a really good organization that helps families who have uh, children with uh, pediatric brain cancer. And this year we're also adding in the Ronald McDonald House. So, um, you know, here in Charleston with the uh, Medical University of South Carolina does a, has a lot of oncology, uh, pediatric oncology uh, patients. And so we were able to raise uh, $100,000 from last year, hope to, to top that this year. Um, it, we're actually moving to a new location. Last year we were in a, a beautiful location on the Ashley River. If you're familiar with Charleston, it's a peninsula. We're moving to the other side of the peninsula. We're going to be on a, another beautiful location called Riverfront Park in North Charleston on the Cooper River. And it's actually be a much bigger space. So we're able to expand it a little bit. Uh, have a, We group every, all the pit masters into four culinary villages. We had three last year. We're adding a fourth one this year. And I think we have 30 restaurants represented uh, this year from 10 different states across the country. And I think Connecticut in, on the Northeast and then all the way out to Los Angeles on the West, quite a good contingent of Texas pit masters uh, coming back. A lot of the same folks coming back from last year and we're adding more to it. So we, I think we've added another half dozen or so um, restaurants to, to the mix. So it's gonna be a, a full day, a full afternoon of, of barbecue uh, overlooking the beautiful Cooper River here in Charleston. If you want more info, go to the website, holysmokeschs.com. That's holysmokeschs.com com and keep your tabs on that. Last question before I let you go. I'm going to talk at length about it next hour with Tim McKeska from McKeska Brand Sausage. But do you have any thoughts specifically on where cooked brisket is these days, Texas and elsewhere? Because in Cleveland, it's 35 bucks a pound and a number of places in yeah. Texas. It's 35 bucks a pound. It doesn't seem to be any less than $28 a pound. Where does it become too expensive for people to say, it's not going to be that this time around. I'm going to go for the pulled pork instead. Yeah, well, that's a good question. I, yeah, I'd made two trips to Texas this summer uh, for the the list and driving around. What I think is interesting in Texas now is that mostly it's not uh, $35 a pound. There are most restaurants now, or a lot of restaurants, are pricing it at about a half pound. Yeah, $17.99. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, like $15 to $18 for the half pound. In fact, yeah. the entire menu is, is now a half pound. Now, I would ask, and they, they will serve you less than that. You can order, you know, one slice if you want. They'll just weigh it. But it's just a less less of a sticker shock. I, it is exceptionally expensive um, right now. And, and, you know, used to be these barbecue tours I do, you know, I, I walk in a $20 bill, walk out with change. But now you're, you're looking at $50 easily if you're going mm. to get, you know, any kind of representative sample. I Personally, for me, briskets is at that point where it's it's not worth the price. But I'm I'm on the record as not being a huge fan of brisket. I will note that um, uh, whole hog barbecue here in South Carolina is a lot cheaper than uh, than brisket. So I would certainly recommend uh, the the whole hog. Uh, as I was doing the tours, um, Scott's Barbecue up in Hemingway, one of the great whole hog joints here in in South Carolina. It's a uh, fifteen fifty a pound for uh, fresh cooked whole hog barbecue. Wow. So about half, you know, less than half the price of, oh, yeah. of brisket and much better deal and, and much better barbecue. That, that is a lot more. It used to be under $10 a pound. Um, in, in by comparison that, and that's out in the middle of Hemingway where, you know, costs that I, I don't think they pay, even pay rent. They probably own the building out there. It's just out in the country. Uh, at Rodney Scott's place in downtown Charleston, it's running about $18 a pound for a whole hog right now. So still far more reasonable, I think if you're in Texas, um, turkey is a, a good deal. And I ate a lot of turkey when I was out there. Yeah, I always would get brisket because brisket sort of became the thing you have to judge Texas barbecue on. But I have to admit that the turkey game is really strong. I, I really like a lot of the turkey I'm getting out there. And I still think one of the best values is is sausage. Get a yep. hot link. You can get a hot link for seven, eight bucks, you know. And, you know, it's so fatty and and, and juicy that it, it will fill you up. So that that's the way I would go. Stay tuned for the new version of the Southern Living Top 50 Barbecue List coming out at some point this month. You can keep up with Robert Moss on his website, robertfmoss.com. And again, if you want info on that Holy Smokes Barbecue Festival that's coming back November 19th, you do that at holysmokeschs.com.
Meathead.com. You can find Robert Moss right here the second Tuesday of every month following Meathead. Robert, great to catch up, and we'll see you in October. Yep. Same here. See you next month. That's Robert Moss right there. Professional as always, and great with the answers, insight. Arkansas barbecue, that's a thing. Who's had Arkansas barbecue? I can name Little Rock, Arkansas. I believe I'm done. I'm not well-traveled, I think they say. RobertFMoss.com, his website, and the Holy Smokes Barbecue Festival website. Holy Smokes CHS, like Charleston. Holy Smokes CHS.com. Before we wrap the first hour, what do we love about ceramic cookers? We love that they're fuel efficient. We love that they can achieve low and slow temperatures for traditional barbecue meats. We love that they can get rip-roaring hot for the high-temperature grilling of steaks and other thin cuts. But what's missing in the everyday ceramic cooker lineup? The real ability to do true two-zone cooking. Two-zone cooking is very important to both professional and backyard cooks alike. It's the best way to manage a fire and cook with confidence. However... Getting a two-zone fire in a round ceramic cooker, not very realistic. Why? Because it's round. Enter Primo Grills and their game-changing oval design. The shape gives you the ability to execute that two-zone setup that you desire. It also gives you the other ceramic grill benefits as well. And when you really start to add it up over 60 different ways to cook on this Primo cooker, so you're only limited by your imagination. They have a Primo Grill pizza accessory. They have a Primo Grill rotisserie accessory, full and half drip pans, rib racks, and the list goes on. Here's the bottom line. Best ceramics in the biz? Yes. Patented technology? You betcha. True two-zone cooking capabilities? Oh, yeah. Multiple sizes? And shapes? Yes. Ovals mostly, but they do have a round one if you have to have a round one. Only sold through dealers, primogrill.com. That's primogrill.com. Find a dealer near you. Check it out and see what they got. Buy the one that best fits your needs. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook, primogrill.com. We're back to wrap the first hour right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content. In an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. Welcome back, and we thank Robert Moss for joining us last segment. Again, if you're just tuning in, the new Southern Living Top 50 Barbecue Magazine. Uh, the new Top The new Southern Living Magazine Top 50 Barbecue Restaurants will be out in at least a couple weeks, by the end of the month, he said. So that's a couple weeks. And what I found to be of particular interest, he's making all the decisions on who makes the list. It's not a group. He eats, he eats again, he eats again. It makes a list or it doesn't. He's putting his name on it, which we love. By the way, this portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker. The most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes with a host of accessories. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner or professional, it's a cooker you want to add to the arsenal, and that's the bottom line. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central show sent you. I would love, and November is not going to be my time, so I got to look even to next year if I want to try and game plan this. But for the sheer amount of talent that he has recruited to come in and cook that event, that Holy Smokes Barbecue Festival, easily some of the best names and the most popular names in barbecue right now, some of the most popular barbecue names that have been in it for a handful of years or more, in the villages, expanding the village from three to four, as he said, Connecticut in the north, Los Angeles in the South, all points in between. That sounds like an event that I would love to get to. But this November, I know, is jammed right now. I'm trying to figure out if I'm even going to be able to make it down to Malcolm's place this year. It's 50-50 right now. It's 50-50. That's not good. I was hoping it was going to be like more 80-20 with the 80% of me going. 
20% of me not going, but we're going to have to see how everything shakes out with schedules and volleyballs and other logistics. It's a thing. All right, we are headed to the second hour. Go ahead and refresh your libations. Tell everybody that's getting ready to come in. They've missed the first hour, but don't worry. There's a whole other new 60 minutes getting ready to transpire that will literally blow your head off. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. This is Jimmy Burns from Melbourne, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate two feet before we nursed. Oh, listen, Laverne, you shut your face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. Yeah, hey, just like that, we are into the second hour. This is the Barbecue Central Show. Maybe you've just stumbled upon it. Happy to have you. Settle in, relax, enjoy what's going on in front of you, which is this here Barbecue Central Show. It's a show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. Covering only the hottest topics. If you missed the first hour, shame on you. You missed Meathead. Talk about... If you're looking, you're not cooking, what's true and what's false. And it's mostly false from what you've been hearing, especially if you're my age. So get over your fears of opening up the hatch on that cooker. It's not adding another hour to cook time. Don't fall for that nonsense. But you can get that first hour tomorrow morning after Meathead. We also had a visit with robert moss and we talked about the new list that's going to be coming out for southern living magazine and his trip through arkansas a barbecue tour of arkansas by the way this show originating from palm city usa cleveland we say good evening to our video streaming partners facebook and twitch slash bbq central show you can also find a video feed on YouTube slash R.D. Rempe. And, of course, we also say good evening to the folks listening on our audio streaming partner, Clubhouse, as well. Hope everybody's doing great. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this coming Friday, episode 246 will be in your face taking you back to September 6, 2016. Now, you might be asking yourself, Greg, wasn't last Friday's best moments from September 6, 2016? And I would have to say, my friend, you are 100% right. It was. Last week, the best moments show featured Ray Lampy, and I asked him about if you could... Just get a tough brisket at purchase, and no matter how good of a cook you were, you were just going to end up with a tough brisket. Well, in the same show, and it was referenced actually at the front of the Ray segment, Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue was also a guest on the show, and I asked him the very same question. Now, I will tell you, outside of the answer on brisket, the story he tells about killing cows, both as a professional and as a youth. And then the stories about cows smelling blood and death in the air will blow your mind. Did I not just say something 
was going to blow your mind as we were closing out the first hour. Oh, yes, the whole second hour was going to blow your mind. So not only is the second hour currently blowing your mind, but on Friday, Dave's stories of killing cows and cows smelling blood and death in the air will then blow your mind once more. I remember having that discussion with Dave six years ago and hearing it again as I was posting it into the queue. Maybe one of the all-time segments ever on the show because I think there is a disconnect for a lot of people still. The meat that you are eating is coming from animals that were killed. Get that big stuff out of here. I know you understand that from a very high level, but seeing it and doing it are much different than knowing in your head what's actually happening and then showing up to the grocery store or the butcher shop or wherever you get your meat and seeing it neatly packaged in cellophane and on some kind of styrofoam tray. You're missing everything that's happening in the middle, like where the Cattle get brought in and then killed. And when people see that for the first time or do that, well, I think that certainly helps bridge the disconnect. Might even encourage some folks to not eat as much meat Uh after they see what really happens. So this isn't where I encourage you to find all the PETA videos and see what's going on. I don't even know if you could get in touch with a killing facility or what do they call it? A slaughterhouse, <laughs> meat packing plant, whatever the politically correct term is and say, Hey, I'm just interested in seeing what happens. Or maybe you can visit somewhere and they can take you around and see where they trot those animals in and then dispatch them. That's a politically term, a uh, politically correct term. And take you through the whole process. Maybe every maybe everybody should do that and see it. I mean, we all think it's delicious. We all love it, right? Of course. I mean, look at us. But seeing it might be different. Anyway, don't forget, if you want to hear a guest or segment that might have gotten lost in the archives, email John, J-O-N, at the com. Let him know what you'd like to hear. Upcoming shows for the rest of the month. Daniel Vaughn is coming in. First time guest. Leonard Batello from Truth Barbecue is coming in. Stephen Reichland will be here. Derek Riches, of course, the Embedded Correspondents and more. So stay tuned for the balance of September. Now, let me cut this promo right here like the wrestlers say. This coming Saturday, September 17th, join me at Hartville Hardware for the 2022 Grill Fest. It takes place all day long. Who should consider going? Great question. Anyone who has ever wanted to meet me in person, you should be going. Anyone that has ever wanted to meet Mike Lang from Another Pint Please in person, that's another great reason to go. Anyone who has ever wanted to meet the guy from Grilling with Dad whose first name I can't pronounce... Another great reason to go because he's going to be there. If you've ever wanted to meet the one, the only, the demo queen of live fire cooking, Diva Q Danielle Bennett, this is the weekend for you. Mike and the guy from Grillin' with Dad are both going to be doing singular live cooking demos. The Grillin' with Dad guy is going to be cooking on the Big Green Egg. Mike is going to be representing Weber. Danielle is actually doing two demos for the Traeger folks because she is that professional and she is that good. She pulls off two. Also, I can't confirm this yet. And days are rapidly flying by as we get closer and closer to Saturday. Tomorrow's Wednesday because today's day is trashed. However, I can't confirm it yet. But if you have always wanted to meet executive producer of the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less and 
Michigan embedded correspondent John Solberg. This would be the best reason to come on Saturday. Forget me. Forget the grilling with that guy. Forget another pint, please. Forget Diva Q. John Solberg said on the last embedded correspondence segment that he would be in Hartville Hardware at some point on Saturday the 17th, and he has not told me anything to the contrary yet, although he did leave himself quite a nice out as we were talking a handful of weeks ago as well, but at the moment, he's in. Also, why else should you go? If you're looking for a great deal on a cooker, Hartville Hardware has an incredible selection of cookers to choose from. And if you're specifically in the market for a Traeger or a large big green egg or Weber gas grill, you can get one with a used price tag on it after the cooking competition takes place. Reduced price. Just figured a way to get it back to your home. You save money. What do I mean by that? There's a cooking competition taking place between Weber gas grills, big green eggs, and Traegers. The bunch of those now have been used once. They start off brand new, used once for this cooking competition. They are sold throughout the course of the day at a reduced price. So you can save big money on a cooker you might otherwise pay big money for. Outside of all that, the store is great. The live fire retail portion is second to none here in Ohio, probably in the tri-state area. And there is plenty to see and taste during the course of the day. I plan on being there around 8.30 a.m., maybe a little bit earlier, and I'll be there until the end. So find me if you want to talk, take pictures, sign autographs. I mean, nobody's going to ask me for an autograph. I'm happy to do it. The autograph fee, it's only 50 bucks. Bring cash. No checks, no Venmo, none of that bullshit. Cash. I'm going to get paid. This coming Saturday, the 17th, all day long in Hartville, Ohio, at Hartville Hardware, the 2022 Grill Fest. I'm your MC. It's going to be great. Tim McKeska is ready to go in the green room before we get to him. I will mention my pal Sterling Ball and the gang over at Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue, a curated selection. Of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies will get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at BigPapaSmokers.com has been pitmaster approved by Sterling Big Papa Ball himself. Big Papa's known for the championship rubs and seasonings, popular flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Prod, and Cash Cow, all proven winners on the competition circuit and in the backyard. 13 perfectly balanced flavors to transform ordinary meals into extraordinary They also own Granny's Barbecue Sauce. So if you're looking for a new go-to sauce that would please everybody, Granny's traditional yet powerful flavor reminds us of why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. And they're selling great cookers. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out that Mac 2 Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa's the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. If you're not a fan of pellet smokers or you don't know which one you should get, call them. 877-828-0727. Consult with one of their experts. Tell them what you like, what you don't like. They'll put you in a grill that best fits your needs and your budget. 877-828-0727. Shop the website, bigpopasmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A smokers.com. We are back with Tim McCaskill right after this. Stick around. Be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. My first guest in the second hour is one of the most iconic names and brands in Texas barbecue, especially when it comes to sausage. But on top of that, he happens to be one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to what is currently happening with meat and the business market. He provides great information during the pandemic. And tonight we try and answer the question that has been running around this show for the last handful of weeks. Weeks? What's with the price of brisket already? Did I mention he's a Barbecue Central Show guest hall of famer? He's got the ring to prove 
Let's race to the hotline and welcome back friend of the show, Tim McKeska. Hey, Tim. Hey, Greg. Appreciate you making time as always. Last time Hi. you were on, we talked about brisket prices. In fact, at that time, and I don't know if you remember this or not, the iconic barbecue restaurant Arthur Bryant's was pleading with their customers to buy anything but brisket. Now, anything, anything, anything else on the menu except brisket. Now, where that conversation seemed to have tailed over the last few months, it has shown a resurgence in the past handful of weeks on this show as we see the price of brisket per pound finished $35 or let's say from my findings uh, anywhere between 27 to 34 $35 a pound and this is various parts of the country especially Texas so in your best estimation is this a supply dictating where the price is being set or is this a time where restaurant tours are trying to see how far they can push it up until the consumer finally says no more? That's a good question. Uh, you know, it's easy to raise prices. It's difficult to, to lower them after, you, you know, especially when you've got so much supply and demand. There's a lot of demand. People are still buying, regardless if it's $34 a pound. People, consumers are buying it. Uh, they love their, their barbecue, and barbecue is a big business now. Uh, but it's interesting, and you'll bring these panels up later. I assume it's some of the pricing panels. Brisket, actually, USDA Choice Brisket has has pretty has kind of leveled off. You know, we have uh, we have different seasons, different you know um, things throughout the year, beginning with um, in in St. Patrick's Day, big brisket for you know up in the Northeast for uh, for corned beef, and then we have. Memorial Day, then we have Fourth of July, then we have Labor Day, and after Labor Day, things kind of t taper off. And so briskets have ta tapered off, pork has tapered off, pork ribs and stuff. But the problem isn't just the fact that pricing is down to about three twenty on on USDA choice brisket; it's the inflation, the consumer price index on inflation. So it's not just the meat that maybe have tapered off; it's the fact that the pit master is having to pay so much more for his power, uh, for his water for his rent, for his employees, his staff, who deserve to be paid well. I mean, nobody doesn't, you know, everybody wants to be, need to be paid well. So everything that is involved with a restaurant business is more expensive. So uh, they may be getting a break on the brisket being down just a little bit, but everything else, did, did you see the stock market today, Greg? Uh, not today, but I saw it yesterday. It had been up for two or three days in a row. Well, you, you, <laughs> 1,200 points today. Oh, no. The consumer price. I can't yes. retire again yes. tomorrow. <laughs> no, you can't retire. If you're in a 401k or if you have stock like I do and I watch it, you know, as on my watch, I've got it. Oh, my gosh. You know, but it's a consumer price index. And that's exactly what happened. And so all the all the things that it takes uh, the consumer to buy is up. And and so it, just like in the restaurant business, this consumer price index applies to that, too. And so it's expensive to do business. And so, you know, I, I would hope that some pit masters are making a little bit more money on the brisket, but still, it's just very costly to be in business. This isn't a political thing, um, and I didn't say I was going to ask you about this when we were sound checking last night, but was it like last year, uh, there, there was a big talk about the increase in minimum wage. It was going to be, you know, 15 bucks or whatever it was, and. You know, initially there was a lot of upheaval and talk on the internet, this and that, but if it gets instituted, could some of this be attributed to that where the business owner is now having to pay their worker substantially more than, you know, eight bucks or seven bucks or whatever it was before, and yeah, now absolutely. they have to stick it somewhere, so it's going to be in the cost of food? Absolutely, and it's big, and labor's big. And if you can find mm -hmm. labor, that's number one, and if it's good labor, that's number two, having great staff. And to get the great staff, you have to pay them more because you have to remember that same that same staff member is a consumer also. So wherever this person lives, uh, he has to, or she has to pay more for, for their rent, for all their goods and groceries and to, to live. And so it's, it trickles down into the, the restaurant business. And, and I've got a lot of family members in restaurant, a lot of family members. And they tell me all the time, you know, this is what we've got to do. If we can get them, you know, I've got a golf course over here uh, that I'm CEO of right across the street and we can't find help. I mean, we're willing to pay them and it's, it's extremely difficult, Greg. And that's where we're at.
Tim McKeska joining us here on the show. The website, by the way, if you're looking to bring in some quality sausage to your food truck or your barbecue restaurant or any restaurant for that matter. I'm sure Tim doesn't discriminate. McKeskaBrands.com is the website. You can check that out, get in touch with Tim, and he'll set you up. He might even drive your order of sausage right to you because he loves to drive and he loves to fly. So we'll see what happens there. Let's get back to the brisket talk here just for a second, Tim. I did a little research on my own over the last handful of weeks. A lot of these are Texas barbecue place. One of them is a Cleveland barbecue place. Frank, uh, Franklin's 34 bucks a pound. Terry Black's 34 bucks a pound. Truth Barbecue, I'm going to have the owner of that store on next week, actually, for the first time. He's also with 34 bucks a pound. Mabel's Barbecue in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Simon's place, 34 bucks a pound, although they sell by the half pound. As uh, my previous guest, Robert Moss, was saying, you're finding people getting a little cute with the menu by putting half pounds on and not having to reveal that big sticker shock number. And then it started to drop after that Panther City was 28 bucks, and that's a, a, a well-reputed uh, barbecue place. Uh, Rudy's, which is a fairly substantial chain, uh, I think originally based in Texas, but that's kind of gone throughout the Southwest, 28 bucks a pound. And then uh, Kreutz at $27 a pound was the cheapest that I found. There's a place out here in Lakewood, Ohio, that's uh, I think 24 bucks a pound. But I mean, of that list, I mean, I would be happy, maybe holding Rudy's aside, I would be happy to go to any of those. So you're looking at 27 to 34 bucks a pound. Seven bucks is a, a pretty big swing, but this evidently is, is where we're living. So where does it stop? Is it going to continue to rise? I think, I think, I don't believe we'll see brisket $40. Uh, maybe not in my lifetime. We may see it. I mean, it all depends on the cattle market too and, and where we're at on that. But uh, I, it's not stopping anybody from going and spending 17. And you're right. It's a little trick that marketing people, you know, barbecue people, all restaurant people have to be a little tricky in what they, how they post their menus. But it sounds a lot better, sixteen ninety five a half pound than it would, you know, $34, you know, plus for, for, uh, for a whole pound. So yes, you're right. Uh, I don't think it's going to get that high, but here's what happened and, and why the, the market is down a little bit on the wholesale end. We had a big drought in Texas. We've had droughts all throughout the cattle states, too, in the, in the southwest. And beginning in around May and June, if you have a lot of cattle and you're, you're grass-fed cattle and you don't have any more grass, you have any more rain, the rancher or the farmer has got to make a choice. Is he going to feed them out with, with more grains? I mean, with bought with bought feed at, that's by the way that's 20 percent higher right now or are they going to pack them up on the trailers and they're going to send them to the auction barn there was a picture that one of my relatives sent me that had a, a line of 100 trailers plus going to a small auction house in uh, northwest Ca texas because the farmers just said okay i give up i can't uh, you know this year's gone i'm gonna sell all my herd off and so the slaughter rates back in may and june started to go up we had a, a lot of kills on on the slaughters but the demand stayed strong but because now we're past labor day the prices have come down is it going to go up i don't know i, I think we're going to be staying we're going to stay probably at that maximum 34 dollars a pound but it's this consumer price index it's the labor and it's getting the product there it's the shipping greg 40 percent less people uh are, are in the uh shipping bin, especially on the refrigerated reefer side. So when you have 40% less people moving meat between packing plants and distributors, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, it used to take three days for me to get product to Chicago, it takes seven to nine days now. <laughs> so I don't know where we're going, but I think we're at the maximum we're going to be right now, unless some other tragedy happens. So two follow-up questions to that, and then we'll move on. Maybe we can get to some of these panels as well. When you see or feel $34 a pound at a barbecue restaurant, a lot of people I talk to go, man, I remember when it was X amount. Or I remember that brisket is supposed to be the unsexy part. It's supposed to be the tough cut. And the mind was trained to think that it was also then supposed to be less expensive. You're not spending the same amount. Look, Tim, we both know I can take 35 bucks a pound and buy a pound of brisket, or I can go now buy a Wagyu steak. I mean, you used to not be able to make Pretty that close. correlation, and yeah. now we're on par. Is it a poor consumer's mindset to still think like that? 
you know, it's because of people like you, it's the internet, it's the YouTube videos, it's people like Aaron Franklin, it's people that have made barbecue so popular. Uh, our friend Daniel Vaughn with Texas Monthly, uh, it's because of this big demand and need for what we call entertainment barbecue. I kind of call it, you know, entertainment barbecue. People travel to eat it. I mean, would you travel across, you know, would you come to Texas? You would probably come to Texas to eat some good brisket, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, conceptually, yes. Everybody knows okay. I travel nowhere, but conceptually, <laughs> I would love to come down well, and eat my way through Texas, no doubt. Well, there's a lot of people that do that, and so they're not afraid to pay that $34 a pound. But you got to remember, if you go in there and you get the barbecue and you get the potato salad and slaw, the beans, the drinks, and everything like that, and you get a beef rib, you know, you get one of those beef ribs, and it'll be $90, you know, for that. And I've been in line. I love to go eat barbecue, and I go to my, my customers, and, and I go eat their places, and I see them. I see two people check out and the bill is $149. Uh, back when I was in business as a restaurateur, $149, we could cater a, a party of 30 people for that. Right. So, yeah, man, it's changed a lot. Tim McKeska joining us here on the show, McKeskaBrands.com, his website. Uh, can I show the brisket panel and you can sure, talk us sure, through this a little up. bit? All right, go ahead and have your way with that. There we are. There's the Decaloff 120. That's the 120 code on Decaloff Boneless Choice Brisket. And as you can see from the uh, the light blue for the current 2022 prices, we're right above. We're about 310 to 319. And if you see the the, the magenta uh, above it, that was last year, which was a disaster when it was, you know, four 475, 480. Hmm. And then the uh, the purple line is kind of the average three year average. And so we're we're not doing bad there. Uh, it's just all the other things. If you want to go to the next one. Um, what's our next one? Was it pork? All right. I got that one right. Or you don't want to talk about pork. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. here's your, 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 yeah, here's your, your, this is my, this is important to me. This is my, uh, this is how we make our sausage, our pork sausage. And so, uh, the picnic meat, the trim combos, we don't use trim, uh, but we do use the, the, the picnic meat cushion combos. That's a 2000 pound, uh, a big, big load of, of, of pork. And as you can see, it's up 4%. So, uh, that's why sausage is a little bit higher. And you then have the I have ribs. the ribs. Yeah. Now, there you go. And then you can see ribs are down. Now, this was big. This is because of Labor Day. Uh, if These prices were, were uh, higher, obviously, uh, at, at 4th of July and at Labor Day. But now we're in this, what we call the fall cruise. So uh, it's coming down. But again, like I said, that consumer price index, that's the crazy one. If you have that panel. There we go. Now that that's that's why that's everything is more expensive right there. Uh and that's why the market today dropped twelve hundred points. Uh pretty scary. It's right there because everything else is costing more. I go along, you know, I told you I used to ship a product for eight to ten cents a pound across the country. It's fifty almost fifty cents a pound now. Mm. So where does that come from? If I'm paying fifty cents a pound, the people shipping green beans, potatoes, everything is going like that. So there you go. Let me circle back to that uh, brisket. I had a second question to that. So is it potentially safe to say that brisket is going to land somewhere here in this $35 range and it's not going to come back? For instance, I'm talking to a truck customer of mine and the price for him has gone up You know, from 2020 to trucks that are now delivering here in uh, well, 2022, so 2021. Uh, they went up sixteen thousand dollars. The same spec truck from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two. Next year's trucks are going to go up an additional thirty thousand dollars per truck. So he's going from trucks that were one hundred and eighty thousand dollars this year. Next year they're going to be two hundred and forty thousand dollars. And he said, "Do you see the the point in time where the price of trucks is going to go down?" And my initial thought is, well, as soon as the demand for trucks goes down. I assume pricing has to fall accordingly, but that's not going to be for another year and a half or so because we just can't build enough trucks to satisfy the demand right now. Peter built on an allotment. I can only sell 50 trucks personally next year, which is only 10 up from 40 this year. And it's like it is across the country. So for brisket, if the demand goes down or, or something happens could we see prices come back to 25 or, or now that they're here, are they just going to live here regardless? 
Well, I think throughout the years we've had briskets that have gone up. We've had briskets that have, you know, peaked and then they've gone down. And what drives it to go down is it's not necessarily the people just kind of saying, okay, uh, I'm not going to eat it. Okay. Uh, if it gets too high, they're going to say that. If it comes to, the, you know, providing for their family or going to get a brisket sandwich, they're going to try to go provide for their family. But I think if if we can get the index down, if we can get m goods moved more cheaply, and if we can get, you know, labor stabilized, I do think we're going to get briskets down to $25, $26 a pound cooked finished product. Mm -hmm. That's what I hope would happen. But will the pit masters go that way? It will also have to deal with competition. All it takes is for two or three pit masters in a town to drop their price. It's like fuel at a gas station. You go search for the best fuel. If somebody starts dropping their price, then you're going to start seeing prices drop. But somebody's got to instigate that. But we do have some relief coming in the future with some more meat options. Well, I was going to ask you that. we got a couple minutes left here, so I don't want to put you into a tight corner here. But a little over a year ago, there was an announcement by the government that they were going to unveil a plan to help build small meat processing plants. I don't know if that really ever took off or not. But then I'm also hearing that there might be a growing collection of Texas cattlemen that want to put a meat processing business together of some sort that would compete with these, quote unquote, big four to, to help out with that price. Thank Thank goodness. So as we've said this many times before, it's a wonder I don't have these four companies that sitting outside my house. Four, four companies that are foreign, uh, control 80% of the market. Four foreign country, four foreign countries control 80% of our beef market. And so the government does have a plan and they understood that they made a mistake when they allow these companies to all get together and, and form these, these major corporations and, and owned outside from the country. So, Texas in the Panhandle has a, a a group that's forming to build their own USDA slaughter and processing plant. Also in the in Nebraska and also in the Dakotas, mm -hmm. it's as a a consumer driven, farmer driven, rancher driven, and but the only problem is it's 2025. It's very expensive to build that kind of plant, yeah. and it's about a 2024, 2025. So finally, we've got people coming forward, going to put up the money and say, Nana, you know, here we go. We're going to compete against you, and we're local franchers. Tim, anything else? Live, local, and late yes. breaking? Yes, late breaking. All right, remember we talked about turkeys. Was it two years ago I told you yeah. how to buy a turkey? You went out yep. and bought turkey. All right, so here's where we are on turkeys real quick. Uh, there's a shortage of deli meats, processed turkeys, like, you know, the, you know, the breast that you see in delis. And a lot of pit masters, you know, barbecue breasts, they can't get them. They'll have one week. They don't. So we're going to be okay. Avian flu has kind of died off, but the uh, it, this turkey is going to be smaller. If you want a 20-pound tom turkey for Thanksgiving, buy it as soon as you see it. It's going to be frozen, so you can keep it. But most of the turkeys this year are going to be 12-pounders. So if you want a big one, get it as soon as you see it. I prefer 12-pounders. If I want to feed more people, I'll get two 12-pounders. I find the cook is a little bit more consistent. That's Easier. just the way I mm -hmm. usually like to do it, but whatever. Hey, uh, Tim, always appreciate the insight here. Once again, if you're looking to add the best sausage in the land to your food truck, business, restaurant, whatever. McKeskaBrands.com is the website. Tim, always appreciate the time and look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. That's Tim McKeska right there. I don't know if anybody knows that side of the business better than Tim. Professional, well-researched, sends me the panels. I mean, this guy has it all, and he knows everything, my go-to guy. We all know the most key piece of information that Tim fed the show years ago. Does anybody remember? He is the leak on Pitmaster Ramon. I can say it now, but the non-disclosure has elapsed, but Tim shot me a message back in the day and was like, oh, by the way, Pitmaster Ramon, I know that guy. <laughs> oh, that was great. Wes Wright is in the green room. He's ready to go. We'll talk to him here in just a second. Well, guess what? We're on week 11, and I'm feeling great. Now, what are we talking about? Do wellness with David Leans. DavidLeans.com slash BBQ. The health and wellness expert, coach, your 
health guru to get you on the path to better fitness and better health. But eating the way you want to eat at the same time, all this is possible. Now, this week was exceptionally tricky because a week ago, I went to the face surgeon and he ripped out a tooth. Uh So, you know what they tell you there. No exertion for at least five days. No smoking cigarettes, which for me is tough. For at least 72 hours or whatever. No drinking out of straws. Don't get your heart rate up. We want that blood clot to form over that hole that's now in your head. And that way the healing starts because if that thing pops out, you get dry socket. Nobody wants dry socket. So I called up Dave and said, hey, here's my thing. He said, okay, you know what? You've been hard at it for 10 weeks, week off. Not that big of a deal. Keep on the eating what you can because the diet's a little bit restricted. You just can't eat like a maniac because food can also rip your blood clot out of your mouth. You don't want that. No dry sockets. So he's there to work with you, tell him what's going on. He'll craft diets and routines or what, or he'll just say, Hey, health is more important than anything else. Recovery more important than anything else, which is what he told me. Once you're back at a hundred percent, then we can get rocking and rolling again. But meanwhile, I'm trying to still get the steps in eating the diet that I can the best or the food. I hate to say diet. So sign up, do it 200 bucks a month. I'm paying 200 bucks a month. You can do it too. And the results are there. Like, that's the bottom line. The results are there. Aside from all the great stuff David's providing, the results are there. DavidLeans.com slash BBQ to sign up right now. DavidLeans.com slash BBQ to sign up. It's not too late. Let's get going before the end of the year. We're back with Wes Wright from CookoutNews.com. Stick around. Be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Let's get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. And we thank Tim McCaskill once more for joining us last segment. This portion of the show being brought to you by smithfield.com. Go there right now for recipes as well as tips and tricks from well-known live fire cooks like Darren Worth from Iowa Smoky D's, Jess Pryles, Hardcore Carnivore, and Childs Cridlin. With mouth-watering flavor, no artificial ingredients. Smithfield Fresh Pork is quite simply some of the finest pork money can buy. The trusted choice of top cooks for use at competitions and at home. That's smithfield.com. Coming out of the bullpen tonight, the creator of the Newsy Barbecue and Grilling website called cookoutnews.com. He has a nose for uncovering and reporting on many new things happening in the industry, and I'm happy to have him back on the show again to talk about what's changed since the last time and the first time he visited. So we race to the hotline, and welcome back, Wes Wright, to the show. Hey, Wes. Hey, Greg. How's it going? Well, I want to point out to Meathead that uh, he's the only one that had microphone issues tonight. The other three guests were absolutely sparkling, so I appreciate you being able to figure that out, Wes. So before any news topics, quick update on how the website itself is developing and if you are struggling to find things to post about. Yeah, it's it's chugging along. You know, I have, I have pretty steady growth. Uh, and, you know, thanks to your listeners, too. I got a nice pop last time I was on. So, you know, I really appreciate that from your fans. But, yeah, it's 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 you know, I'm seeing growth and I'm happy with with where it's at finding articles, you know, some days are great. Some days it's a little harder. Um, I kind of have a personal challenge to myself to have an, at least one article every business day. Um, and I do that by balancing actual, you know, news stuff that's, that's time relevant. And then I'll have kind of my back pocket, some longer form, more research driven articles, like, you know, what's in uh, Kingsford signature flavors or things like that. You know, I've or, you know, impurities and pellets. I wrote mm-hmm. an article on that just to kind of balance it out. The website is cookoutnews.com. If you aren't familiar, go ahead and check that out. I visit many times during the course of the week because there's always some great stuff coming out. So if we look at this time last year and compare it to where we are today, what are the biggest things that stick out to you 
from a consumer side of things? For instance, are sales up or down? Yeah, they're they're going to be down. You you know, it's hard to compete with just free money and being forced. You know, not as much last year, but past couple of years, forced to being at home really helps grill sales. Uh, but if you go back to 2019, you know things are looking decent. They look decent in September from from, from some data I was seeing. Um, and then also one thing called out on a lot of the earnings calls from the the public um, outdoor cooking companies is that the consumer is experience driven right now, and that's you know why they can't sell grills. But along with that, um, you know, Camp Chef said they had a 30 percent increase this year in in camp stoves. So, you know, I, I think. You know, we'll see if they refocus kind of their product offerings around that mm. to satisfy the consumer. So maybe it's not people just looking to buy grills specifically. They might be adding other outdoor cooking vessels uh, outside of the cookers. Yeah, exactly. Other other options that you can, you know, go and get away from your house for a little while. One of the items that I saw recently on the website was uh, I had a, I think it was the head of sales and marketing, uh, Ramsey, uh, last name that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, which is uh, a shame. Uh, Next Grills, uh, he was the, the VP of marketing for Next Grills. So they're filing for a trademark on something called the Spire. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, that that one, they they filed it for a ton of grills, pretty much, you know, any, any uh, fuel source imaginable. It covers, but also barbecue utensils, which I found interesting. Um, it, you know, could mean Spire. They're just calling as like the pinnacle of grilling. I, I don't think so. I think it's probably, you know, like a coil, an electric coil, something like that. A reference to mm-hmm. that is, is my guess. So if it's an electric coil, then we could potentially continue to deduce that this would be an electric style grill. There have been... I don't know, two or three different full-sized electric grills to hit the market. So if Spire is also a full-size electric grill, do you think that this is going to be a trend then that is going to stick for at least the oncoming years? Yeah, I, I think a lot of grill companies think that's the future. Yeah, you had the, you know, a chart grill had the edge. They have a trademark for something called the current. Then you've got, uh, I think it's Lumen for Weber. They filed a trademark for a full-size electric grill. Napoleon has one coming out in the fall. So it's definitely something that companies are investing a lot of money in as the next big thing. You reviewed the Charbroil Edge on your website, and you seemed to like it more than you didn't. Um, what what stood out to you as being great? Yeah, I liked that it, it was a legitimate grilling experience, kind of you know, and one thing I saw in Charbroil's patents that they have on electric grills is it's around perception that people think of like a George Foreman grill, you know, you're <laughs> grilling with a panini press, <laughs> you know, like that's what people think. And that's kind of what I thought too, but I figured, you know, hey, I'll, I'll give it a try. But, you know, it, it gets to 700 degrees, which is pretty impressive. I cook some great tasting sk- steaks on it. You still get a lot of flavor out of them because the drippings, you know, create smoke and it, it really, I, I was impressed with how it performed. I'm tr- still trying to wrap my head around the potential, I won't say onslaught, but the potential onslaught of full-size electric grills. Where are they going to be sold into? Is there a, a thought that people are going to be moving into condos and high-rise apartments and places where there isn't open fire that's allowed? Because I just... Uh, for all these years, how come there haven't been them otherwise? Yeah, I think they had some technological limitations, is my guess. Um, but yeah, if you live in an apartment, you know, and a charbroil edge is fantastic. I would have loved to have that in my twenties when I was living in apartments and I couldn't have a grill on my my balcony. But yeah, with increasing fire bans that you see out in the western states, you know, it makes sense. Or, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's all like seems like low hanging fruit for these grills. Or you know, if you know, you don't want to lug around a propane tank or, you know, maybe you have physical limitations. But I, I think that they'll get to a point that they can compete more with gas grills, you know, as, as a method of cooking. One interesting thing, too, with the with the the uh, current that Charbroil has a trademark for, it's also trail, trademarked for um, outdoor kitchen cabinets. And so just throwing it out there, if you had it 
hardwired in, you could run it off 220 versus, mm -hmm. you know, a conventional outlet and you'd get a lot more performance. So I don't know if that's the way they'll go with it, but you know, it, it definitely would, would add some, some options. Were you able to find any type of time frame on that current as far as release or production? I, I didn't, but usually it seems like a trademark comes out, you know, around a year beforehand. So I would say next summer I would, would start to hear rumblings about it is my guess, but that's just, you know, based off of what I've seen. Next grill released the Nevo smart grill earlier this year. Maybe it was even a little bit before then this had this specific one that I'm talking about. It was like the, the Nevo 720 smart grill or whatever. It had an air fryer attached to the side of it. Any idea on how that's doing and selling by chance? Yeah, if I had to guess, I'd say not great. Um, so I, I, I have a couple. <laughs> Why? An air fryer next to your gas grill isn't cool? I mean, they thought it was great. Well, what's neat about, you know, I guess what's different about that one is, too, they had a, they're having a big push into smart grills, which yeah. I, I consider them kind of more entry level products that you have at like Home Depot. I, you know, there's probably next grill, grill fans. I don't want to offend there, but that's just kind of my view of them. Um, and I think that might hurt them as well because, you know, the Nevo with the air fryer is $800. So if you're just going to Home Depot to pick up a grill, you might, you know, th that's a, a competitive category to go into. But like that article on my website for the Nevo ranks pretty well on Google. So I can see how many impressions it gets. And it's it's not a lot. So either people are just buying them off the floor or they're not not buying them. But, you know, I, I do appreciate that that next girl is trying to push the envelope the, you know, they're, they made a statement that with their app, they're going to put that on a lot of new products coming out. So they have like the Oakford pellet grill that also has that same technology of, you know, their app interface. I, I have one on order actually, so I'll see how mm -hmm. that goes. But, uh, they say that's, you know, what they're investing in. So I appreciate the innovation. There still hasn't been a ruling for green mountain grill and Traeger yet, but let's assume goes terribly wrong for Green Mountain Grill. Does uh, Next Grill open themselves up to be next in line here with whatever their app interface is, or have they worked around whatever possible infringements there could be? Yeah, I'm not sure how they get around it. I mean, I can think off the top of my head a few different grills that have an app interface. So, you know, and they're not all getting Traeger lawsuits. I don't know if maybe Traeger's waiting to win one and then go after the others, you know, that wouldn't surprise me if that's the case, or maybe, you know, cause they're, they're trademark specific or they're patent specific to cloud yeah. interfaces. You so know. it could just be something where you're connecting, you can get around it by connecting to your local area network or your own router and working it that way versus then having it kicked up somewhere where it's stored. Yeah. And I, I think there might be some, some specifics to that patent because even if you, it might have to do with control as well, because there's like, I have a thermal work signals, which is, you know, their, uh, temperature probes goes into a controller and I can view it off Wi-Fi. So somehow they made it around that too. You know, and I don't have to be at my house. I don't believe I've gone for walks and, mm. you know, monitored my grill. So there's other companies doing a very similar thing. And so that Traeger hasn't come after them for, for one reason or another. One of the interesting companies that's really gained a lot of heat here over the last handful of years has been Blackstone, obviously well known for the griddle that almost seems to be the Kleenex version of, you know, everybody says they have a Blackstone. Maybe they don't even have a Blackstone, but that's just the name that resonates uh, within this sector of the industry here. And they're looking to diversify into the backyard a bit, getting into outdoor heating. What can you tell us about that? Yeah. And yeah, Blackstone, they, by their internal data had 80% of the market share on griddles, which is insane. Uh, but yeah, they, they have a patent that came out that's outdoor heating. My guess is they're talking about, you know, outdoor fireplaces, you know, a la solo stove or, or something like that. It, they, they seem to love using propane though. So it might be a propane powered as opposed to wood. Hmm. Um, they also just have some patents that they don't seem to use too. They, they have a patent out there for a pellet grill. And it's funny because their CEO, Roger Dahl, a year ago did an interview um, and he talked about, he kind of like knocked having a pellet grill. He was like, no, you know, with a griddle, you can do, I know he's trying to sell his company, but it's like with a griddle, you can do everything. Whereas with a pellet grill, 
you're limited that you can only kind of cook barbecue, which, you know, I don't necessarily agree with, but that, that was his perspective. And I just thought it was funny that they have an, a patent out there for a pellet grill, mm. but he's saying like, no, pellet grills suck, you know? They were racing to go launch an IPO and then that one took a shit. What happened to that? Yeah, they, they were going through, it's called a, not to bore everyone with finance, but it's a, a SPAC merger, a special purpose acquisition company. So it's, it's like an investment vehicle that was real popular last year where you form a company when get people invest in it with nothing. There's no, no operations. Then you find a company to merge with <laughs> to bypass the process of going public. Because normally to go in public, you have to have like three years of audited financials. It's this giant process. And as you can imagine, the government didn't really like the spec process because you're bypassing them. Um, so those were just, you know, crashing and burning left and right. And there were very few left. But uh, they had the Blackstone one late in the game. I think December 21st of last year, they announced it. Um, and then they kept pushing out the close date. Um, then, you know, and time kills deals. If it doesn't take that long to merge a company, um, you know, 60, 90 days is pretty standard, uh, especially merging with something that has nothing in it. So once they started pushing out the dates, they got to a point where they pushed out in June to September. Mm. Then I'm guessing that Blackstone saw the results, which I'm, I'm sure are, you know, they're still growing, you know, and a lot of people love Blackstones, but yeah. They probably didn't want to IPO while their results are aren't looking good because I'm sure it's like all the other companies out there. So could, could be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm hoping that it's it's an opportunity to, you know, that's a big distraction to try to IPO. So hopefully they can focus back on, you know, putting out new products. Like they have a pizza oven they've been teasing for months that we haven't seen that's supposed to come out this year as well. So <laughs> hopefully they can focus on that again. You had mentioned Solo Stove a couple different times there in the past couple minutes. They're bringing a, what appears to be, tabletop s'mores cooker to market, and I'm wondering what your take on that item is. So I, I, feel, I fear it could be fairly unsafe, just the way it sits and the way they're showing it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have one on order, and I'm going to use my uh, my infrared gun to kind of test temperatures on it because I'm curious. And yeah, if you get people that aren't used to just having open fires and they're just putting them on tables, like kind of willy nilly, it seems like it could be dangerous. Um, I I'm curious to see how it is. They're they keep getting they're back ordered quite a bit. Like mm. I got an email that mine's back ordered till October. And I look on their website and now they're pushed out to like November delivery for some of them. I don't know if they're having supply chain issues or they're just that much demand or somewhere in between. But yeah, it's, it, you know, it, it seems like it could be a novelty that will, <laughs> will wear off. Wes Wright is the creator of cookoutnews.com. Make sure you visit that website uh, many times over the course of the week so you can keep up with all the business and breaking news in the industry. Anything you are uh, looking to scoop here? Before the week closes out? Um, not this week, but keep an eye out for product launches. I don't, I'm, there's a few this fall. Um, Camp Chef says on October 1st, they're going to have a, a, a game changer that they quote, oh, you know. Yeah. So we'll see what that is, but just keep an eye out for those on my website. Wes, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. You got it. Wes, right? The website again, cookoutnews.com, if you haven't visited. Very well put together, very easy to read, great articles, great insight. So appreciate his newfound help and contributions to the show. Before we wrap up this show, I will talk to you about Vortic watches. Back in the day, watches were made to be worn in the pocket. But after World War II, the wristwatch came into vogue and the pocket watch quickly went out of vogue finding their ways into sock drawers and scrap heaps and that's a tragedy enter vortic watch company helping bridge the gap between america's storied watch manufacturing past bringing it to present day where wrist watches of course are finding incredible popularity once again here's the coolest part each watch that vortic makes is unique and one of a kind so the one that you get nobody else is going to have one just like it vortic founded on the motto that america wasn't assembled it was built check out their watches at vortic 
Watches.com. And if you've been standing idly by since last year for the military edition watches, they're coming out here in a couple weeks. So go to the website, sign up for the email alert. So when they start rolling out, I think they do one a week or whatever it is. Uh, fairly expensive, six, 7,000 bucks, maybe more, but great case. The watch itself is spectacular. It's big. I think it's 51 millimeters. So keep an eye out for that. Very impressive. VortecWatches.com. We're back to wrap the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Wimpy. And we thank Wes Wright from cookoutnews.com for joining me last segment, helping me break down the latest goings on in the live fire world. Next grill could be the next grill manufacturer coming out with a full-size electric cooker. Charbroil could be adding a whole nother one. That would make two for them. I did try to get them on the show to talk about their electric cookers multiple times this year, but that didn't really pan out. I was invited to take part in that media launch March, April maybe it was. Then couldn't drag them onto the show to talk about it. Now they might have two. And then he said Weber has something called the Lumen. So interested to see this. Fascinated now that there are full-size electric grills coming out after they were widely available to have been out low these many years and decades. Wonder why that is. Here's a question. If you're listening in podcast, email me, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. And all preconceptions and stereotypes aside, would you be open to getting a full-size electric grill? Let me know your thoughts on that. Greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. All right, let's make tracks out of here all the way back in the first hour. We fought with Meathead about his microphone, and we ended up talking about if you're looking, you're not cooking, and dispelling those myths, but telling you the truths that might also be associated with that. So if you missed it, Go back and get that podcast tomorrow at 35 past the first hour. Robert Moss reappeared on the show. We talked about Arkansas barbecue. We also talked about how within the next couple weeks, the Southern Living Magazine's release of the top 50 barbecue list, which he is solely responsible for, putting his name on it. So interested to see who makes number one all the way down to number 50. Second hour, Tim McKeska came back on the show. We talked about where brisket pricing is now. We talked about why the pricing is where it is. We talked about how logistics is playing into this now and shipping, lack of truck drivers, lack of ability to get trucks. Will, will $34 or $35 a pound brisket be here to stay even a month or a year from now? Time will tell. And then we close it out with Wes Wright from cookoutnews.com, talking a little bit about Next Grill, how the website's going, all that fun stuff. Second hour will be up on Thursday. Don't forget to sign up for the podcast feed so you get the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less on Friday. Two things before I let you go tonight. I want to say happy birthday to my sister Kate. Happy 21st birthday again. And also, because it was two days ago, a special remembrance when I say September 11th, 2001, I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. This is Jennifer Paulinus from Shalote, North Carolina, and this is Barbecue Central.